Hi guys! Uh, so as all of you know from my several videos, I did have a tonsillectomy four weeks ago today and I was just sitting here thinking how incredibly helpful it would be to make a video with a list of, of things that's important to get and have um, for your surgery after you have your surgery for the recovery and important questions to ask your doctor and um, things like that. There's actually a lot of things on this list, there's actually 20 things on this list, and the reason I have the list already made up is because my nephew had a tonsillectomy on this past Friday, and I made the list for my sister, too, because she had her tonsils out, but she was like 14, and uh, now she's almost 36, so um, so I figured she you know, would forget some of the things to get. So I have the list already made out, and I thought it'd be helpful to share with you guys. So um, I assume that some people might find my videos because they're doing a search about tonsillectomies because uh, they intend to get a tonsillectomy. So um, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Number one is a cool mist humidifier. Um, it is so important to keep your throat moist. Um, it's really easy because there's so much there's so much pain that it's really easy to let yourself get dehydrated because you just flat out don't want to drink. And some people that I talked to said that they actually had a drool, a drool rag that they would just sit and drool on because they didn't even want to swallow their spit. Um, you have to just push through it and you have to drink, but a, a something that will help you out is a cool mist humidifier. Um, it will keep your throat moist and I suggest keeping, if you go out of the room, bring it with you, put it in the other room. So um, number two, a good sturdy pillow and you need to sleep upright about a 90 degree angle at least. Um, like I've said before, what I've done is, um, for the first couple weeks was slept on my couch and, um, the arm of the couch, I would just put a nice sturdy pillow against it and just kind of sleep in about a 90 degree angle. Um, the main reason that you can't sleep, uh, laying down is because your uvula will be swollen. I know some people will probably have their uvula removed, but I would imagine that just the swelling in general back there in your throat will will make it, if you lay down, you'll have a hard time breathing. And um, you'll definitely snore after your surgery until the swelling goes down. So, um, so yeah, you definitely want to sit um, or sleep in a 90 degree angle. So um, a nice sturdy pillow would be good for that. Um, number three, ask for hot ice packs from the hospital. Don't forget this one. Um, the hospital, I, you've, um, if you go back and look at some of my videos, you'll probably see me holding this ice pack against my throat. And um, it's a reusable one. They gave me at least a few of them, so it was nice because a couple of them, like I spilled something on it and I was able to throw it away. So at least get a few of them. And um, it's got a clip on the end of it so you can just put ice in it. And, um, and what I found was to crush up the ice the best you can um, so that way you can like mold it into whatever, um, you know, however you want to get it. If you want to wrap it around your throat, if you use small enough ice, you can mold it. And I also suggest, um, put adding a little bit of water to it. So that will help make it easier to mold also and get all the air out of it as well. So, um, so yeah, definitely ask for ice packs. Uh, let's see here. <sighs> Number four, um, you'll want to have your freezer stocked up with ice cream, sherbet, popsicles, um, but they do say to avoid too much dairy because dairy uh, causes mucus buildup in your throat. So it's kind of hard for some people because, you know, ice cream really helps some people. Now, for me, I had my freezer stocked up with a ton of ice cream, and I did like it. But it tasted weird, and I thought it was too extremely cold for my throat. Although what I did do was suck on ice cubes, and as it would melt, every... Every so often, a little bit would drip down my throat, and it helped reduce the swelling in um, your uvula. But I did not find ice cream helpful at all, but a lot of people do. So um, if you do, maybe try to get... Sherbet probably doesn't have as much dairy in it as regular ice cream, so I suggest mainly sherbet and popsicles. Um, but you definitely don't want to have too much ice cream because you don't want all that um, mucus to be building up in your throat because it would make it hard for you to heal. Um... And then the ice chips, like I had just said, I'm jumping ahead. So number five is ice chips. Um, it will help reduce the swelling of your throat and your uvula. Um, I suggest even um, going to like Sonic or someplace that has some really good um, chopped up ice or get like a bag of ice and then um, 
before your surgery, I mean, because you're not going to fill up to this after your surgery, make sure your ice is prepared and you're in like a bucket in your freezer or something beforehand. You'll want to crush it up real good, even if you have to break out a hammer and put it in a Ziploc bag and just crush it up that way, just whatever. Um, but you'll want to do all of this ahead of time because when you get home, you will not feel like doing anything. I guarantee that. Um, let's see here. Number six, ice water. You need to be drinking at least three to four quarts a day. And when you have your tonsillectomy and you feel the pain, you're going to be like, yeah, right. I It hurts just to take one sip. Um, but the more you use your, um, you start swallowing, you're, you're exercising your throat and you, it's so important to swallow and, um, cause your throat needs to heal. And if you just sit there and do nothing about it, you're not going to heal right. And it's going to take forever. So you'll, it may not seem like it, like it would, um, like I've said before, it's kind of counterintuitive, but you really need to push through it and it help you heal faster. And I'll tell you what, when I had my recauterization on that Saturday after my surgery, that really got me like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to let this happen again. I'm going to do it right this time. Because I was seriously, like, not eating, not drinking. I was completely dehydrated. And that's probably what caused my my um, scab to break off and start bleeding. But you need to uh, make sure to drink, 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 drink. Tons of water. Only water. After about a week, you're going to want something warm. Um, I noticed around day seven, cold stuff no longer felt good on my throat. And the swelling had gone down. Um, the only thing that felt good on my throat after a week was hot tea. And I would just let it cool off a little bit so it was more like warm tea. So ice water. Um, let's see here. And then if once I once really, really cold stuff gets um, too uncomfortable after about a week, just drink, um, you know, tap water or, you know, lukewarm water. Or you know what I'm saying. Just not freezing cold. Number seven, Jello. Jello is really, really good. Um, you just... You know, chew it up and it just slides down your throat so smoothly. Even after, um, even the day you come home from the hospital and your throat is swollen almost shut and your uvula is taken up all that room, it just slides right down your throat. It's a perfect thing to eat. Number eight, eggs. Eggs, I, I couldn't believe how, what a perfect food eggs were. Um, scramble them up and um, when you're, if whoever cooks for you or if you do it yourself, if you're just a super superwoman or superman. I would have never been able to cook for myself in that first week or two because um, I was in a lot of pain. But um, when you're having the person scramble your eggs, just have them just scramble the crap out of them until they're, you know, broken up into really tiny pieces and they just glide down your throat so smoothly. Um, number nine, when you're at the hospital, and I mean before you have your surgery, not after, your doctor is going to come and talk to you, and the anesthesiologist, they're going to come talk to you before you go back. They're going to um, ask you some questions, and that's your opportunity to ask them questions as well. If you wait till after your surgery, your, um, your do after your surgery, your doctor will probably talk to your family member who is waiting on you, and then they're going to leave. Um, and you won't have the opportunity to change. He's already going to have the prescriptions written out before he begins your surgery. So definitely ask these questions before your surgery. Um, I would recommend asking for either liquid medication or a pill crusher. Now, let me explain this real quick. Um, the liquid Lortab, I was in so much pain that something as strong as liquid Lortab didn't even touch my pain. Percocet is a really strong drug, and it's even stronger than the liquid Lortab, which is like 7.5 milligrams or whatever. It's stronger than the average Vicodin. I guess Lortab is like strong Vicodin or something. Um, Percocet is even stronger than that. So I recommend getting the Percocet if they are going to offer that to you and getting a pill crusher and, um, uh, definitely ask for one or the two or both. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Number 10, um, buy some plain Tylenol, but be careful. You might not be able to do this till the second week because you'll be taking so much of the Percocet and Vicodin the first week. You have to be careful because you're not allowed to have more than 4,000 milligrams a day. And believe me, it is so easy to, to um, reach that 4,000 milligrams. You'll reach 4,000 milligrams just taking the um, Percocet, just like the normal Percocet, which I think has like 320, 325 milligrams of Percocet per, I'm sorry, of um, Tylenol per pill. So that's like um, 650 milligrams per dose if you take two at a time. 
So you'll get to that 4,000 if you take them every four hours. And the first few days I had to take them like every three hours. So I was going taking way too much Tylenol. That's very dangerous. It can um, mess up your liver. Cause, um, ir it could cause irreversible liver damage. So be careful, but maybe after you're able to slowly cut back on the narcotic painkillers, you can um, take plain Tylenol and just kind of piggyback. Um, definitely want to have it beforehand. Okay, number 11. Um, get some books, magazines, crossword puzzles, paper, crayons. Just I put that for my nephew because he's a kid, but you know. Um, just something to keep you occupied. I had my Kindle and my book. A Kindle is a really good thing to get. If you're thinking about purchasing one, now is a good time before you have your surgery. Um, number 12, uh, kids, um, I put kids chloroseptic because this was um, for my 8-year-old nephew, but um, supposedly chloroseptic is good. I never did use it. Um, I was kind of afraid it would burn, but then I, I was reading online. A ton of people swear by it and said it really helps. It's a temporary thing. It only helps probably for five minutes, and um, but maybe it'd be a good thing to spray your throat with the chloroseptic to take your medication. If you don't have a pill crusher and if you have to swallow a whole pill, it might be a good time to take it so it numbs your throat to get the medicine down. Um, number 13, let's see. Um, okay, so um, it's really easy to get thrush if, they, if your doctor prescribes you antibiotics. Um, you won't be able to really brush your teeth very well, um, and you won't be able to get all that bacteria um, out and taking too much antibiotics can put, you know, leave the bad bacteria. I don't know. It's, I don't even know really much about it, but I got thrush. And what I did, and double check with your doctor before you do any of these things that I'm telling you about because I'm not a doctor, um, but what I did, and the doctor said it was okay, was I got a Q-tip and I made a mixture of half peroxide, half water, dip the Q-tip in it, and I just, um, I swiped my, my tongue, and I didn't go back in with the same, I flipped it over to the other side, dipped it, swiped, and you're going to go through a few Q-tips. Don't, you don't want to reintroduce the bacteria back in your throat, so swipe it once, throw, and throw it away, swipe it, throw it away. Um, let's see here. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Um, number 14, chicken broth. Um, it's important, especially for the second week, week, because warm things feel especially good on your throat. Um, let's see here. And number 15, um, gum. I didn't realize this until it was probably, you know, I had already pretty much recovered. Um, I wish I would have done this because um, you don't really get to chew much, and you're mainly, like, you know, drinking, and you're barely... It's hard to even open your mouth the first few days. Um, it might have something to do with the way they clamped your mouth open or whatever. Um, but supposedly gum is really good for exercising your jaw, and um, it's supposed to be a really helpful thing. So I didn't get to use this one, um, but I am going to pass that um, that tip on. So let's see here. Number 16, mouthwash. Ask the doctor if you should swish with it, but if you suspect that you have thrush, and this is what my doctor told me to do, um, if you don't have a new toothbrush and you need to brush your teeth again, um, after you brush your teeth at night, put some um, mouthwash, some really good um, strong mouthwash in a little cup and soak your toothbrush in it overnight. And um, because you don't want to use your toothbrush again and again if you have thrush, especially after you've taken the pill to get rid of the thrush, I recommend getting a new toothbrush. But um, if, like I said, if, if it's nighttime, you suspect thrush, just soak it in mouthwash. So... Um, let's see here. Number 17, yogurt. Not only does it feel great on the throat, but it also prevents thrush. Um, I still managed to get thrush, but, um, maybe it helped it not get out of control. Um, but I actually, when I crushed up my Percocet, I sprinkled it on a spoonful of yogurt. And that's how I took my medication every four hours. So I got a lot of yogurt. And it was really perfect for taking my crushed up medication. So definitely a good thing. So kind of a win-win. Helps prevent thrush. Feels good on your throat. Um, number 18, comfy clothes and slippers. You'll want to be comfortable. You're going to be laying around lounging a lot, especially for the first week, um, two weeks maybe. Um, number 19, me relax. Um, when you go under general anesthesia and, um, and also taking narcotic painkillers constantly, it slows down your, um, it, you may, it makes you completely irregular. And as a matter of fact, not to give, not to gross you guys out or give too much information, but I think it was two weeks before I went. 
yeah, so, um, and that's because I wasn't taking anything until, um, after two weeks. But if you, I just want to help you out and like, and I want someone to learn from my mistake, um, right off the bat, like, and I think a good thing to put it in would be like the chicken broth. Cause that's strong. Even though the Miralax, you don't taste it. It's a supposedly tasteless. Just if you, you could put it in your water and you can't supposedly can't taste it, but I don't know. I don't, I've tasted it in water before. I, I mean, I thought the water tasted a little bit weird, but it might have all been in my head. But I think if you have some chicken broth, maybe put a little Miralax in it, and that will probably be a good um, preventative measure. And um, and I would do it constantly through the whole thing because the whole time you're on the narcotic painkillers. So very, very important. So I was like seriously thinking I was going to have to, you know, go to the hospital or the doctor because it had been so long. Um Let's see here, number 19. Okay, number 20. Um, oh yeah, so you're gonna need someone to take care of you. And I, like I said, I was making this for my nephew and he's he was a little kid, he's eight. But for the first few days, your voice isn't gonna be good. It's gonna hurt to talk. And, um, but if you're, especially if your child is having a tonsillectomy, you wanna get them like a little bell so they can jingle the bell when they need to get your attention because they it'll be hard for them to talk, especially, you know, yell if you're, you know, down the hall or upstairs. So, um, anyway, that's it. So I just thought this would be really helpful because I mean, a lot of these things I did already have and a lot of them I didn't. So, um, I think if I would have, um, had a lot of these things on the list, it would have helped a lot like the gum and, um, oh, what was it? Uh, there was another one that I especially thought would be a good one. Um, Maybe the chloroseptic, I think that's what it was. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. And let me know if you have any questions because, you know, this is all fresh on my mind. I just had the tonsillectomy four weeks ago today. So ask questions and let me know. Um, just let me know if you have any questions or if, um, if there's anything I can do to help. And if you're having a tonsillectomy soon, good luck to you. And um, uh, get well soon. So talk to you later. Bye.